Good morning. And, uh, today we are supposed to come to the last part of this uh, lesson. That is the sine rule and cosine rule. Uh, before going to that, uh, dear students, I am supposed to do another few questions under Inno's uh, trigonometric functions, right? So then, uh, after that, I come to the sine rule and cosine rule. Uh, that is the overall uh, theories in this lesson. But people uh, remember, uh, we must do more sums uh, as the first stage. Uh, today, I do the questions, some questions under sine rule, cosine rule, and after another one or two months, people again we. Uh, start to discuss more difficult sums, including the past sums. Anyhow, uh, today and next week, and another one week I take, and thereafter I come to the end of this lesson temporarily. So after that, we start a question discussion from the very beginning. The number of questions we solved in this lesson is uh, not anyway enough, according to my opinion. Right? Uh, so then uh, we must do more sums because definitely. Uh, <coughs> Complete question, whole question of 150 marks uh, coming every year to the paper from this lesson. So, therefore, it is very important lesson. Very soon you can score marks. Uh, so, therefore, you must do more sums, including more past plus. Okay, there are different types of uh, very important, very uh, interesting questions under this lesson. Now, I think uh, more than two months, of course, we learned this trigonometry. Now, only we harvest huh, uh, from the lesson. So, therefore, we will do the rest part also very patiently. Okay, <clears throat> right before today, as the first question, I suppose to take in your tutorial, uh, page number three at the top, question number five, it is this. Uh, this is the question there. It is uh, the fifth one. Ask you to solve this. Tan inverse, x minus one. Plus tan inverse x plus tan inverse x plus one is equal to tan inverse three x. Right. Okay. Is the question here? We have to find this x. Right here, we have to find this x. Okay. Right. <clears throat> so this is inverse. Trigonometric function, right? We have to find x. Because you know, every term in the left hand side gives us an angle, this is also an angle. So, therefore, we take this angle as alpha, huh? right? This angle will be alpha, alpha is tan inverse x minus 1, and this angle I'm going to take as beta, beta tan inverse x. This angle I'm going to take as gamma tan inverse six plus one. This angle I'm going to take as delta tan inverse three. Okay. Then bring this tan inverse to this side, people. Then here we get answer with this tan inverse to this side. That will be the inverse minus one will eliminate, and only tan coming one side in this side. This gives us tan and phi is equal to x minus 1. Here tan beta is equal to x. Here tan gamma x plus 1. And here tan delta is 3 x. Okay? Now, up to you, I think you can clearly understand. Right? <coughs> now, people, uh, after introducing this way, Alpha, beta, gamma, and this is delta. Hmm. Therefore, angles not right. So, this given equation, your students, we can write hmm. how the given equation we can write as alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to delta, is equal to delta. That way, you can write the given equation. Okay. And then you can start to write like this. Then the given equation. Can be written as what people how to write that. This is alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to delta. This way we can write given equation alpha plus beta plus gamma 
equals data that we can write. Okay, now what we do, people, after reaching this uh, strip, you can take this gamma on the right hand side. Okay, this implies that f plus beta is equal to delta minus gamma. Taking this gamma on the right hand side. Now, what I do is we take 10 on both sides, right? Taking and on both sides. So what you get is this left hand side we have n f plus beta right hand side we have then delta minus n okay right now we can expand this left hand side using tan f plus b we can expand right hand side using tan a minus b understand right now first expand like that people First expand like that. Right. <clears throat> now, once we uh, remove the bracket people in the left hand side, that means this is uh, uh, we expand this and it plus B using this gaming and speed which we expand, right? So, this is what then we get people. <clears throat> you know, again, A plus B formula is what people, and A plus B formula is what? And A plus tan B divided by 1 minus tan A tan B. Then tan A minus B. And a minus tan b divided by one plus tan a tan. Understand? So then, if I write expansion, this is tan n alpha plus tan beta divided by one minus tan of n beta. Because the numerator, <coughs> this sign is the sign here we have. Okay. For the denominator, we get the opposite sign of this. That's how we can simply remember the formula. So then using that, if I write this, this is tan delta minus tan gamma divided by one plus and delta and gamma. This is what we get done huh? yeah. here. Uh, now, people, uh, you can substitute for the standard alpha. Hmm? But standard alpha x minus 1, tan beta is 6, and tan gamma, tan delta for everything you can now substitute. Okay, right. Now do that. Okay. Yeah, tan alpha is x minus one. Okay, plus tan beta, tan beta is six equal, right? And divided by one minus tan alpha x minus one, right? Tan beta is six. Equals on the right hand side tan delta equal tan delta is three x minus tan gamma. Tan gamma is x plus 1, put minus sign and then bracket. Okay, <clears throat> 1 plus tan delta is 3x, hmm? tan gamma, tan gamma is plus 1. This is what we get, people. Huh? This is what we get. This also for tan alpha is x minus 1. And we write 6, 1 minus, which minus 1 into x, and delta, it's 3x minus, and gamma is 6 plus 1. Yeah, right now. Yeah. Now, uh, we call the uh, <coughs> yeah, x and x 2x. Hmm? Into x minus 1, um, right? And here, yeah, 1 minus. Bring this x inside. x and x, x squared minus 6. Right here, do the record. Minus 6, 3x minus 6 is 2x. Minus 7. Divided by 1 plus here. 3x and x, 3x squared. And 3x. 
Okay. Okay. Now you can uh, <coughs> uh, at once uh, you might get an idea to cancel down this two x minus one with this two x minus one. You know that's usually we do, but you know cancellation both sides by this two x minus one really means that we divide both sides by hmm, two x minus one. That's the meaning of cancellation by 2x minus 1. Uh, both sides, the 2x minus 1 available at the numerators. When we cancel down people, that is, in other words, we divide both sides by 2x minus 1. Even last time also, I emphasized that when we divide something by a value, we have to ensure that it's not equal to 0. People, uh, 2x minus 1 should not be equal to 0 in order to cancel down both sides by 2x minus 1. Well, how do we know that 2x minus 1 not equal to 0? Huh? 2x minus 1, if 2x minus 1 not to equal to 0 only, this way the cancellation is 2x minus 1, with this 2x minus 1, we can do people. Understood? 2x minus 1 should not be to 0. 2x minus 1 should not be to 0 mean once I leave this minus 1 to right hand side, that will be plus 1. This is 2x dividing both sides by 2. What we get is x should not be equal to half. x should not be equal to half. That means 2x minus 1 not equal to 0 means people x should not be equal to half. If we are sure that this x can't take half, then of course we can cancel down to x minus 1 on both sides. People, how do we know this x is not equal to half and how to find that? What is x really people? x is this. That only we need to find. Because we are given inverse trigonometric equation huh? asking to solve. Solve means people, there is an unknown, unknown term available. What is that term? It is x. We have to find x. Now, in order to cancel down this 2x minus 1 from both sides, <coughs> we should know x not equal to half. That means when you consider Solutions of this equation for x, answers of x, no? solution of this equation means answers of x. Among the answers of x, this half, this x does not take half. If we can verify that one, that says x not equal to half, therefore to x minus 1, to x minus 1, we can cancel that. People, just when you put x equals half there, what happens here? When you put x equals half here, right? I can write tan inverse half minus 1 is minus half. Here, yeah. tan inverse x is half hmm, plus tan inverse. Here, when I put half plus 1, it is 3 by 2. Right hand side, we have tan inverse x is half means 3 by 2. People, you can really understand here tan inverse minus half. The next case, people will be. Prove sometimes today we can prove this one. We prove a relation like this tan inverse minus theta, right? Not minus theta minus x. It is an angle tan inverse minus x. This minus sign we can take out. Okay, this result I am going to prove. Then figure one side take this minus sign out. Then what we have here minus tan inverse half, here plus tan inverse half. Then this two you can cancel now. Then left hand side we have tan minus 3 by 2. Right hand side we have tan minus 3 by 2. They are equal. That means this equal sign become value. That says x equals half is a solution of this equation. Then x can take half. Therefore, x not equal to half is wrong. x equals half is possible. If x equals half people, what happens? 
this 2x minus 1 equals 0, that location, both sides, you can cancel down what 2x minus 1. If you cancel down here itself without checking like this, 2x minus 1 from the left and right people, you will miss one solution of this equation and you broke marks. One solution you miss. What is that? X equals half solution. See here, nicely we can show x equals half, right? The solution satisfies this equation. What is meant by satisfying? Satisfying means when I put that x equals half to every x in the left hand side and the right hand side, the left hand side is equal to right hand side. That is called as satisfying. Satisfying means it is a solution. So therefore, in that case, people, before you cancel down terms in the left and right in the present equation, it's better to check twice whether that divisor is zero or not. If zero people don't cancel down, right? completely your mathematical concepts wrong. And meantime, you will miss one solution of the equation. Remember that. So therefore, people don't cancel down here. Once you cancel down this two, people you are divided both sides by zero because x can take half. When x takes half, people, two x minus one will be equal to zero. Cancellation two x minus one both sides mean you divide both sides of this equation by zero. And meantime, you will miss one solution of the equation. So therefore, don't cancel down. If you need to cancel down, people, you have to check whether that x value is a solution or not. If that is not the solution, then you can cancel down. Understood? Okay. I did this question to explain the situation, right? This kind of uh, uh, situation, especially normally this type, you will find sometimes in your past papers and in my next tutorial also, you will uh, find this kind of questions. Another one tutorial there is to give you, right? So I'll give you that tutorial. Once I start the discussion of questions of this lesson second time. Okay, now very simple some side put into the tutorial, first tutorial. Right? The other one is the people uh, having more questions and more complicated questions. Once you do sums in it, people, you will find this kind of situation. Therefore, meaningfully understand here uh, what to do that equation. Okay, so therefore, people don't cancel down this. Okay, and then what we do? How to simplify this? By using this, right? By using this. People, we use the cross multiplication to this end. By using this, we use the cross multiplication to this end. Understood? And bring all the terms to one side. Right. Do that one thing. I'll be two, three minutes. Right. Now, here's the cross multiplication. This way, 2x minus 1. And that part. Right hand side denominator comes to numerator as the product 1 plus 3x squared plus 3x equals hmm, this 2x minus 1 with one and with this hmm, with that 1 minus x squared minus 6. It's all the other people to bring to this side. Hmm. Then we have two x minus one times one plus three x squared plus three x. As you take this side, we get minus two x minus one one minus x squared minus six. Also, bring this to this left hand side people on the right hand side, no value remaining. That is something but zero. No, it's zero. Okay. Right now, people here is 2x minus 1 here and 2x minus 1 here. Common. They get out as common factor. Okay. They got to get 2x minus 1. Also, take out. It's in the Better this part will remain here. That's nothing but 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. Once you take this two out, we have a minus sign here and this part. Right? Now it's 1. Remove the bracket by not by minus sign, minus x squared, minus minus plus 6. Okay, now equal equals 0. Hmm? Why well, took this 2x minus 1 out? 
and here we have minus sign, right? After minus sign, this letter we have. Is it better? This letter type removed by not by minus sign. Here minus x there, minus minus plus x. Okay, people. Now, furthermore, we can simplify this record. A square plus A plus one. Remove the bracket by one by minus sign minus one minus minus plus x band and here minus six equals zero. This one and minus one can cancel down. And people uh, get three x squared and this x squared is four x squared. No? And 3x minus 2x is equal. It's 2x equals 0. And now, uh, if the vice from this bracket, you can take 2 is common and x is common. 2x is common. Take a 2x out. Okay, take a 2x out. Here we have 2x minus 1. Pass to take 2x out. Here we have 2x. We should divide this and this both by 2x1. No? In this 4, when you divide by this 2, we get 2. Okay. When you divide this x squared by x, we get x. When you divide this 2x by 2x, we get 1. Equal 0. Okay. Right. And now we will. What we can do is, is this a number? This is a number, and this is a number. The product of these three numbers is equal to zero. Then, what are the possibilities for this product of these three numbers become zero? That can happen. This is zero, or this is zero, or this is zero. That's right. This implies. That implies 2x minus 1, 0, 2x, 0, or 2x plus 1, 0. Okay. This implies us also subject to 6, take this minus on the right hand side and divide by 2. x equals half is one solution. Here, 2 multiplied by x, when you multiply 2 by x, the answer is 0. Definitely, x should be 0, no? 2 is multiplied by x. The resulting answer is 0. x is 0, right? Here, it is 1 to right and divided by 2, we get x is minus 1. Therefore, people, there are three solutions for this equation. Here. This is how we take the solutions of that in our metric function, the equation, right? Right, people. Okay, that's an expression. Take in your tutorial, page number three, question number 10, page number three, question number 10. Page number three, question number 10. Number 10. Okay. Then you are given this. Show that sine inverse 2x upon 1 plus x squared equals 2 tan inverse 6.
We have a proof of sine inverse 2x upon 1 plus x square equals to tan inverse x. We have to prove this. Hmm? You have to prove this. Okay. Right. Now, to prove that very easily, people, we use this relation. You can very clearly understand we drew the tan theta graph. Tan graph we drew. Can you remember tan graph? The tan graph we do is this. This is the x. We have this x mean people and right? or theta will take theta is the angle, this is a negative angle. This is the tan theta positive axis, right? This is the tan theta negative axis. Right? And to be not escaper in the principal part of the tan graph, the principal part of tan graph is in between minus 9 10 plus 9 10. Like this, huh? At uh, minus 5 by 2 n plus 5 by 2. Can remember we had uh, vertical asymptotes, no? Right? Vertical asymptotes we have. About this asymptotes in detail, we discuss in the application of a derivative lesson in detail. The diagram falls before this. Okay. This axis is angle axis. Right. This tangent axis, what we have people values. One, two, three, four. I so on up to infinity the values available. This time we have minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four. After minus infinity we have. Right? Is the tan graph in its principal part? Because here the most important thing is now if we say any real number. For example, suppose 100,000, was it 100,000? You can really find that positive 100,000 on a positive tangent axis. Suppose somewhere here we have that positive 100,000. From there, people, if I draw a horizontal line until it meets the graph, and from the point of intersection, if you draw a vertical line downward like this, you can see people, you can see there is an angle here, there is an angle here. Here we have 100,000, from there we draw a horizontal line until that line meets the graph. From that point of intersection we draw a vertical line until that meet the angle axis. Then you will find there will be an angle. If I take this angle as alpha, if you take it angle as alpha people, tell me relation between this alpha and this 100,000. But tan of this angle alpha, tan alpha is equal to 100,000. That's the meaning. Like that, people. Whatever the real number, now you have up to positive infinity and up to negative infinity. Whatever the real number, all the real numbers available on this axis from this end up to this end. Understand? Any real number, according to this last relation, you can see any real number available from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Now you can write. And angle. This angle exists where people from minus 90 up to 
last night. Oh, what is this result, people? This result is any real number you can write as tan angle. Tan angle. Where does this angle lie? That angle lie between minus 90 and plus 90. Understand, people? Okay. So this is another important one. Right? Any real number you can write as tan angle. Such angle exists between minus pi by 2 and plus pi by 2. Understood? Okay. So there are four people. What is this x? Sine inverse. After sine inverse, here we have a really value of people. Then these two x upon 1 plus x can is a particular real number. And there are x also. A particular real number. Whatever this x takes from the set of real numbers, whatever this x, it is a real number, that x you can write according to this illustration as for people. x equals tan angle. Such angle you can very easily find between minus 90 and plus 90. If you use this method, people, this proof is very simple. Understood? Right? Okay, people, shall you take down this as a knot? Hmm? Then you write one sentence, and that will be very helpful in the future. Understand now? So then you will count this as a knot. Right or nice? First rule is one. Draw the background. Draw the background. And we'll write our sentence. Okay, after all these people will write one sentence. Right, right on this one. By the tan graph shown above. On the bow, by the tan graph shown above, we can write, we can write any real number. We can write in real number as tan alpha as tan alpha we are alpha is an And such that such that alpha less than pi by two greater than minus pi by two. Alpha less than pi by two greater than minus pi by two. Right, people know? Right. So this is very important one, no? In the future, we'll use this one. Right. Okay, little by little people, uh, though this is available as a not people, don't, uh, of course, uh, 
underestimate this. Remember this one. Little by little, we stay pick what important things. That is how we finally uh, uh, improve our knowledge. Uh, little by little, we have to feel it, right? Yeah. Now we have to come back to this. Okay. See what I is this. Here this x is a real number. Then that x we can write as before one and theta. Okay. All right. We can write consider. Consider this. I can write here x is a real number. X is a real number. Therefore, we may write x equals tan theta. We are theta is 10 by 2, greater than minus 5 by 2. Right? You see this. You can determine like that. Now we have to write sin inverse to x upon 1 plus x square. Uh, it is equal to, I write, I substitute for this x from this. Sin inverse to tan theta divided by 1 plus tan square theta. I substitute for this x tan theta, right? This way. Right. If other can someone tell me what is this? 2 tan theta divided by 1 plus tan square theta. 2 tan theta divided by 1 plus tan square theta. 2 tan theta divided by 1 plus tan square theta. What is that? Tan hmm? 2 theta. What? Two tan divided by one plus tan square theta. If I can remember, we wrote 28 formula. Now you can't remember them. Hmm? Hmm. Uh, don't say lies, people. Don't say lies. Go to norms. Huh? Two tan divided by one plus tan square theta. We obtain 28 formula. Among that formula, I think this was in. Uh, 23rd or 22nd formula. Hmm. Right, go through your formula and tell me the correct answer. 2 times you divide by 1 plus 10 square feet. 10 hmm. to theta. 10 to theta wrong. Sign to theta. Yeah, it's sign to theta. <laughs> it's sign to theta people. Uh, I told you that this formula will be used. That location, understand? Whenever you do error match people, you should have a good memory. Not only for the error match. Okay, if somebody does Sri Lankan error people, good memory is very important. 90% hmm? of you are research responsible. The memory power. Understand? Tan 2 theta and sin 2 theta we are. Hmm? When you write sin 2 theta, it was 2 tan theta divided by 1 plus tan square theta. People remember, tan 2 theta, when you write people, here this is negative. Hmm? Understand? Sin so, theta? It is sin 2 theta is the 2 tan theta divided by 1 plus tan square theta. This is sin 2 theta. Okay? This is sine 2 theta. Go through the formula. Right? I told you to bring all this formula to one piece of paper and keep with you always until we finish this lesson. Sometimes people not only until the finish of this lesson, but for the other lessons also, till the end of this combined math course, till you go to your examination, you need sometimes that formula sheet. Keep that to itself. Right? Okay. Right. So then this is really people. 
sin inverse we can say now we have sin inverse v squared by 1 plus x squared right now the right hand side what we have is sin inverse this is nothing but equal sin to theta sin to theta right you are can somebody tell me what is sin inverse of sin to theta I will not sign to it. What is that? You have to give me this situation. Sign to theta is equal to sign to theta. Everybody agree with me? If I need to subject this to theta, what should I do? You have to take this sign to right hand side. That becomes sign inverse. Understood? That is implies. Two theta is equal to sine inverse sine two theta. This way. Okay. Then people here see this. This two theta, it's an angle. It's sine taken first. Thereafter, of the whole result, we take sine inverse. Angle sine sine inverse sine. Sine inverse we have. Then this one is the answer. It is to say people in logarithm when you speak the situation related to logarithm people we have two. First find it a logarithm. Secondly we find antilog. Ah, huh? what is the answer people? Again this two no like that and. If sine is found of the whole result now a real number, if sine inverse found, we should get the angle. Understand? Okay. So therefore, people, the right hand side is nothing but sine two theta sine inverse means this two theta, right? That is two theta. That is two theta. Okay. And then what we get is this implies sine inverse. Two x upon one plus x squared is equal to equal what two theta no two theta. But what is this theta, people? What is this theta? Yeah, here x equals ten theta. Hmm? But x equals ten theta. That means ten theta equals six. Once you take the tan right hand side, this implies theta equals tan inverse x. Hmm? Subject theta. Theta equals tan inverse x. Put that there. Hence, we get the answer. Sine inverse two x upon one plus x squared is equal to times tan inverse x. This one we simply prove. People, though we take nearly 15 minutes to prove this one, this is a uh, 15 seconds. Understand? But at the beginning, people in detail learn. Hmm? Don't uh, only consider to get the answer. The environment you use and their properties, when we use, where to use, and everything, you have to understand this because this situation is very helpful in the future. Getting the answer is very important only at the examination. Before that, people, your first priority is getting the answer is our first priority. But once you move along the, that track, people, the environment, you have to understand. Because that understanding, people, will be very useful uh, in another question when you work out. Okay? Right. So that is how people gradually be pick the methods and things, right? Different types of getting the answers. So this kind of what knowledge you should have. Hmm? Right. Asking a question, what are the oil requirements to do ailments? People, that depends on schools, right? Most leading schools, right? You know what is meant by leading schools in city. So those schools, of course, very demanded. So that schools usually they consider sometimes more than eight days, or sometimes nine days, more than five days with uh, science and maths A classes. Okay, that depends on. The school. Understand? 
So therefore, uh, exact answer we can't give. That depends on school. And people, uh, the thing is this: whichever the school, maybe a leading school, very uh, actual rural school, whichever the school people, according to my uh, opinion, people, most of the students, they get be helped by the tuition for their uh, university entrance. In my case, people, I directly say without any hesitate mind, I did my errors because of the help of the tuition classes. <laughs> I say that one. So the other people, uh, based on your school, sometimes when you apply for a school, uh, because of your research, sometimes the school never allow you to do maths in that school. If you need to do maths itself, people, is a good opportunity in a life. Though the school, don't consider about the school, whatever the school, uh, since you do everything by tuition, go to that school, there you can do maths. And only two years you have to study there. Thereafter, you can go to your green path. So therefore, depending on the school, the requirement change. Okay, people. So therefore, don't highly consider about the school. Most of the time, our students, they very much like to do their science stream, but they can't find a fine school. School means people, they always uh, expecting a good school based on their research. But according to your research, people, sometimes you can't get that good school. But people, your final results, your results, highly does not depend on the school. If so, people, all the leading schools, uh, students must go to university. Hmm? No, that is not happening like that. And uh, meantime, the rural schools, students should not go to what the university don't people know. Why not you? We know. So they are both. For your aerial results, school is not a huge fact, not a huge fact. A little fact is there because the competition, because most of the uh, talented ones uh, come together in a but reading school because the most of the uh, talented students only they consider because the school has more demand. Do that nine years, eight years, more talented students they get together. They are there. There will be a what people competition. So because of the competition. Uh, to get more marks than next term test, uh, they are working because of that. People, uh, there's a little push like that. And then that people, every student in the picture of the school, leading more, not people they take tuition. Right? So, so they are for people. Uh, nobody can say this is the exact result, but uh, minimum research people, hmm, uh, you have to pass the uh, maths and science for one because of this time I am saying. Uh, one student, uh, I'm not going to reveal about the school, I did never English medium maths having on his pass for maths in oil. <laughs> so, see, I can't remember. But anyway, any, uh, if you need to do a maths with your results, don't go to, if you want to get quite a good school, uh, what where you have, uh, the school you can do. Or else, it is not necessary to have uh, a school. For your errors, you can do privately, but you have to do the practicals, chemistry physics practicals, right? Uh, getting a school, right? Through the education department, you have to apply. I am doing privately, then I need to cover up my practicals. Then they will assign you for a particular school in the city to cover up your practicals because the practical is necessary uh, before applying the uh, uh, examination through private. So therefore, people, if you need to do ailments, right, it's a huge avenue. That means a huge opportunity in your future. So don't give up that. Uh, because of the school, don't turn to, to art, so come so <laughs> to other subjects, right? Right? Okay. Right. So most of the students, they ask uh, by sending messages, uh, is it, you know, that depends on school people. Right? Yeah. Okay, this one we got. All right, so then uh, here it's okay. This answer we got. What is the answer there? Sign inverse to x upon 1 plus x square. Now we prove equal to tan inverse six. Right. 
right now we will ask another part to their parallel hence show that right we know people whenever we have the word hence definitely the result we have already told should be used okay yeah so the result we have proved already is people this time sine inverse to x upon 1 plus x can is equal to tan inverse x. Right. Now the next part, you want to say people, sine inverse to a divided by 1 plus a square hmm. plus sine inverse To be divided by one plus b square is equal to two ten in you know, six. Hmm? This right now, people here we have sine inverse two x divided by one plus x square. For the case of this x, we have a here. If you write this as tan, 2 tan inverse 6, then I can write this as how people? 2 tan inverse, right? A, no? Okay. We have x here. Okay. We have x here, 2 tan inverse. Right? Like that, this one we can write 2 tan inverse b. This equal to equal 2 tan inverse 6. 2 tan inverse 6, right? Right. Now, this two you can cancel down. Right. This two you can cancel down. Now, what we have is equal tan inverse a plus tan inverse b is equal to tan inverse 6. Then we have to find a 6. Now, this is inverse trigonometric equation. Now you know the method. What is the paper method there? Huh? This is an angle. Let us take this as alpha. This is another angle. Take it as beta. This is another angle. Take this as gamma. Right? Predict. Alpha equals and you C. Beta equals and you B. Gamma equals tan inverse 6. Can bring this tan inverse to the side. Tan alpha is A. Tan beta is B. And gamma is equal to x. Now, this equation given, we can now write as alpha plus beta equals gamma. Yeah, understood? Right. Now, the given equation can be written as practical quadratic functions. Alpha plus beta is equal to gamma. Right. Now, what we do, people? Yeah, take n on both sides. Taking n on both sides. Repeat. Hmm? Tan alpha plus beta is equal to tan gamma. Okay, people. Now explain both sides, not both sides, left hand side, and take that side, you can take this out. I will probably two or three minutes. Yeah, uh, people, the left hand side, you can expand using tan a plus b, right? How to expand this? Tan alpha plus tan beta divided by one minus tan alpha tan beta, no? Right. Okay, so then this is tan alpha plus and beta divided by 1 minus 
10 alpha, 10 beta. This is 10 gamma. Right. Now, for example, for 10 alpha simple A, 10 beta simple B, this is simple A, plus this simple B, divided by 1 minus A. B. Is equal to 10 gamma people. That's 10 gamma. It is x. Right? Subject for this 10 gamma x. This equal, this means this x equals this. And this implies x equals a plus b divided by 1 minus a. Right? Yeah. This will be the like answer, right? Yeah, uh, people, question number 11. Now you can do your homework. To this question number 11, your homework. Right? And now we come to the question number 12 as the last question under this. Hmm? Take question number 12. Take question number 12. Okay. Question number 12 in your tutorial, page number 3. That sine minus x plus cosine of six equals pi by two. Hmm? We have to prove this. Okay. That means x is a real number, but this time is x real number should lie between where people minus one and plus one. Why? You know, sine graph and cos graph we drew that sine graph and cos graph people lie between plus one and minus one. Can you remember that? Hmm? Sine graph is this not equal. Hmm? Maximum means plus one. Minimum means minus one. This is theta axis. This is sine theta. Also, also same. So, therefore, this time is x should lie between plus 1 and minus 1, including both. Right. You know, people, uh, this is an angle. In this case, remember, we have to show the left hand side is equal to right hand side. That means we have to prove. Left hand side is equal to right hand side, that is, this is an identity. This is an identity, not an equation. We are not going to find an answer for x. If so, that becomes an equation. Not an equation here we have. We have an identity. Under an identity people, we have to show the left hand side is equal to right hand side. Or right hand side is equal to left hand side. So therefore, this time we have to show left hand side and right hand side become equal. To show that people, what I do is, I start from the left hand side. I start from the left hand side, okay? I take there, this sine of six is equal and angle no? alpha. This one I am going to take as beta, okay? We take rate alpha equals sine of six. Beta equals, Cos sigma 6. Okay, these two are two angles, right? Yeah. Okay, now once I bring this sine of this side, this implies us sine alpha equals 6 
and this is sine beta also minus right now this left hand side but we have this alpha plus beta no people alpha plus beta i have to obtain an expression for this alpha plus beta as phi by 2 understand the now purpose is to find alpha plus beta directly this alpha plus beta we can't find then what we do is first i take alpha plus beta and i take sin of cos of that i need to find this alpha plus beta i have to prove this alpha excuse plus me beta. sir yes sir is that sin beta or cos beta yeah this is cos beta no i'm no, sorry for that as a huge mistake right this one also take this cos sin as this side we get cos no beta right i wrote a purpose to get your attention hmm? only one student was in the class <laughs> all right that's a mistake now we will uh here now alpha plus beta here we have we have put this alpha plus beta is equal to pi by two now what i do is this i'm going to first take sine of this or we can take cos also okay i take uh, suppose i take cos here right cos l plus beta this is like cos a plus b cos a plus b people can remember the expansion of cos a plus b expansion of cos a plus b formula cos a cos b minus sin a sin understood now using that expansion hmm? cos a cos b means cos alpha cos beta minus sin alpha sin beta okay now cos alpha given how to write cos alpha you know 1 minus sin square alpha is what people this is equal to cos square alpha no? then how to take cos alpha k is square root of cos So therefore, cos alpha I can write square root of one minus sine square alpha and cos beta. Right. And here, sine alpha. How do I write sine beta? Sin square beta equal to can write one minus cos square beta. Then sin beta is the square root of one minus cos square beta. Hmm? So that I can write here. Sin beta is the root of one minus cos square beta. Right. Now substitute sine alpha cos beta to the right hand side. One minus sine alpha is six, but here we have sine square alpha, which is six here. Cos beta is six minus sine alpha beta here six. One minus cos beta is six. We have just six ten. Well, what can we see there? This term again available here with minus sign in between them. Then these two we can cancel. We get zero. Then left hand side we have cos alpha cos beta equals zero. Remember, uh, for one angle, cos becomes zero. There are many angles. In the principle, 
Huh? When we consider of the cost graph, huh? it is 90. You know? 90, 90 means 5 by 2. Then this is an angle, its cost value is 0. Then this angle should be 90 when we consider the principal part of the cost graph. You know the principal part of the graph, cost graph is people 0 to 1, you know. In between 0 and 180, the angle which brings cost 0 is 90. That is pi by 2. So therefore, this implies hydro plus beta pi by 2. But what is that? This sign inverses, beta cos inverses. And this implies sign inverse 6 plus cos inverse 6 is equal to pi by 2. That proof we did. That proof we did. Huh? Yeah. Okay, other part is there. Yes. Next one, uh, show that the only solution of the equation sin inverse 6 minus cos inverse 6 pi by 6 is x equals to 3 by 2. Yeah. You know, this one we have proved now. This part we proved just now. Since that has been proved already, we can use that result whenever we need. This is proved. Right? And you know, again, you must very carefully understand in this proof what this is. This is any real number between. Minus one and plus one. Hmm? For any real number which lies between plus one and minus one, when you put here and here, this left hand side is equal to right hand side pi by two. As long as you put for this x here and here, a real number between minus one and plus one. Okay, All right. Now suddenly People, we are given another one. It is this. Sine the six minus cosine the six. Sine the six minus cosine the six. Is zero pi by six. All right. Now we need to find people the value of x. X should be a real number between plus one and minus one. Because you know, whenever we write sine inverse or cos inverse, that number after that inverse we should write should lie between minus one and plus one. Let me say before this. Now the question in hand is this. There is a real number. It is 6. Right? Sin in the 6 minus cos in the 6, pi by 6. Sin in the 6 means people and an angle. Cos in the 6 also an angle. Right? Then this angle minus this angle is pi by 6. Then what should be this x? That x should be a value between minus one and plus one. We should give an answer for x that should definitely be lying between minus one and plus one. Okay, right. Now to give this x, right? You know, this x answer of this that answer should lie between minus one and plus one. Right, this way. Right. Suppose there is line somewhere here, like point 0.1. For example, I'm saying now, this x is point 0.1. Now, the same value point 0.1, when I put here point 0.1, this sum is pi by 2 always. So therefore, this equation we can use as long as we put for this x a value 
between minus 1 and plus 1. And definitely we know this x in this equation we need to find should be between a value between a value, a value between minus 1 and plus 1. Then to get the x here, what I do is people, I add this 1 and 2. I add 1 and 2. Once we add these two equations, the left hand side we have to add. Here what happens? Cosigno sets plus minus cosigno sets. It's like x minus x. That two will cancel out. Signing of six plus signing of six people to signing of six. Is equal to right hand side when you add pi by two plus pi by six. Equal pi by two is ninety. Pi by six is thirty. Ninety plus thirty is one twenty. One twenty mean people what? Pi by three is 60. Multiply this by 2 only, we get 120. Then we get 2 sine inner 6 is equal to 120. 2 pi by 3 is 120. This 2 and this 2 you can cancel. Now, this gives us sine inner 6 is equal to pi by 3. Now, people, once you bring this sine inner right hand side, this minus 1 will eliminate and that becomes sine. Now, x will be subjected, right? Then this implies x equals sine pi by 2. You well, you know, sine 60 root 3 by 2. Therefore, x is equal to root 3 by 2. This is how we take a task. This is how we take the task. Take one. Well. Okay, uh, now people have some work. I do. The expressions involved in inner spectrometric identities and equations. Remember, we do more sums, right? I mean, a uh, uh, small gap. We start again. In 2022, batch also I did like that. Only the first part I did. The second part I'm going to start after the two three lessons. Like that, I'll start your case also. The discussion of some complicated questions and some more different types of questions in the future, uh, given the next tutorial. Right. Now, people, now we we'll step to the last part of this. Hmm. That's the sine rule and cosine rule. Hmm. Right. First, the right on paper, the heading as standard notation. Of a triangle. Standard notation of a triangle. Standard notation of a triangle. And remember, uh, when we consider hmm, any triangle, hmm, this way, suppose this triangle is ABC. Hmm. I could handle triangle that can be. Sometimes right angle triangle or obtuse angle triangle. Now, you say when we consider it is a triangle, we use a notation called as the standard notation. Because whenever 
we name this triangle using these three capital letters and the word search. The usual way naming the angles, people, with the same letter available at that vertex. This is capital A, this angle. The vertex is B, angle is capital B. Vertex C, angle is capital C. If you use here the vertices P, Q, R capital letters, then the angles also hmm, we name by using that capital letters available at the respect to what vertex. Okay. And the other thing is people the sides, length of the side opposite to this angle. Now angle is capital A. The opposite side is BC. It has a length now. That that length is people usually mark as the corresponding simple letter of this capital A. It's capital A now. Then this length is simple. Hmm? Then this capital B now. This length is simple B. Capital C now. This is simple C. Right. That is first thing. And people, you know. The perimeter. Huh? Perimeter of this triangle. Perimeter means people, sum of the lengths of the sides. Perimeter is denoted by two s. Two s. You might ask why two? That's the standard way. No more questions. That's the standard way. Two ways. Huh? What is then two ways? Two ways is A plus A plus C. Okay. Second thing is people, the area of the triangle ABC. Area of the triangle ABC is denoted by delta. Hmm? Hmm? ABC. Angular area is yes, denoted by this notation delta. This is the letter delta. There is another way of writing delta this way, hmm? by capital simple form. Right? This is the notation we use delta. This is people called as the standard notation, but there are more notations available relating to this triangle in the standard way, right? So they are not that much important in this discussion, right? You know, people are some more uh, available like this. Uh, people, you can very clearly understand uh, we did this in your all levels by using uh, perpendicular bisectors. Of three sides, you know they meet at a point, no? Okay. What is the point? The point where three perpendicular bisectors of the sides of entangled meet. Huh? You did one construction also under this. What is that point? That point is called as circumcenter. Hmm? Perpendicular bisectors of the sides of the triangle, they meet at a point. For that, there is a standard notation O. If you are taking this O as a center, distance from this O to any vertex as the radius, if we Draw a circle. That circle passes through the three vertices of the triangle like this. It's called a circumcircle. That circumcircle has radius. To denote that radius in a standard form, the radius is considered taken as people capital R. Like that people in center. 
What is meant by insect? You know, people, when we consider a triangle, we can construct the three angle bisectors. Huh? Three angle bisectors. There are three angles of this uh, triangle. No, people, this is this angle bisector, this angle bisector, this angle bisector, we meet at a point. This is called as people in center. Notation is I. And taking this I as a center, and from this I to any side, the perpendicular distance as the radius, if we draw a circle, people, that circle touches all three sides of triangle internally, and we get a circle like this. It is called as in circle. And its radius is denoted by simple law. Simple law. And like that, people, some more standard notations available. But in our syllabus, mainly we have to consider these two. Okay? Right, so then uh, first we'll come to that. Write the heading as standard notation of the triangle and write down this A. Consider the triangle ABC. Consider the triangle ABC. Draw the standard paper. Draw the standard. Okay, now I'm going to write number two rules called as sine rule and cosine rule. In this discussion, I'm not going to prove them, but in your syllabus, you should know how to prove that sine rule and cosine rule. That proof of the sine rule and cosine rule, I'm going to do in the next discussion of the trigonometry. Understand? So then we'll write next subbidding as sine rule and cosine rule. Sine rule and cosine rule. Right. All right, on like this, consider. A triangle ABC in usual notation. In the usual notation means is the standard notation. Consider triangle ABC in usual notation means usual notation means this standard notation. Hmm? Is a triangle is ABC. The angles are divided by capital letters A, B, C. The opposite sides, the lengths are divided by corresponding simple letters. Of that, it understood. Yeah. Then the triangle I am going to draw this. Hmm? This is A, this is B, this is C. Now this angle is A, this angle is B, this angle is C. Usual notation means this side is simple A, this side is simple B, this side is simple C. This is the usual notation. Huh? Okay. Because this sign rule is this. First time is a sign rule. Sign rule. Sign rule states this. Yeah. Take the sign its length. Simply divide it by its opposite angle is A no, it's sine length. A divided by sine length. Sine capital yeah. And now take this side B. B divided by sine of the opposite angle. Sine B. 
and the other side C divided by sine C. This C means the length of the side DP. This C is the angle capital C here. Now, people, there are three ratios now. People, whatever the triangle, this can be a two angle one, obtuse angle one, right angle one, equilateral triangle, isosceles triangle, scalene triangle, whichever the triangle. People, the sine rule states these three are equal. This is a sine rule. This is a one form of right hand sine rule. People, you know, if these three are equal, they are reciprocal also also equal, no? So, therefore, when we write a sine rule, according to our requirement, some occasions we write a sine rule the other way around, take the reciprocals. That also will be right. Or the other way, people. Sine A by A. Equals sine b by b equals sine c by c. This is the sine rule. This is the sine rule. Write down here. Okay. Next one, people. Cosine rule. Cosine rule. That also we expect to prove in the next discussion, right? Cosine rule. Cosine rule. I'll explain the way of finding cosine rule to you. Under this cosine rule, we write the cos value of the angles of this triangle. Cos C, cos B, and cos C. Right? Remember the way of finding cos A first. I'll explain. Cos A. Cos value of this angle. Right? The angle A. Adjacent to this angle A, what are the sides available? This side and this side. Understand? Now first identify the sides available, adjacent sides of the angle A. Now this side and this side. Okay. Now square the lengths of those sides and add them up. B square plus C square. No? Now go to opposite side. It is A. Square that and subtract it from this sum. Right? We take the sum of the squares of the adjacent sides of this angle. And we subtract square of the opposite side. And we will divide this by two times product of the lengths of the adjacent sides of this angle. Not too easy. This is how we write cos C. This also we can prove. You know, similarly, you can write cos B and cos C. Right? I write on that too. Hmm? Quite following this. Hmm? Right. Cos B and cos C. And remember cos B when we write Right. The B angle here, no? Addison sides, A and C. C square plus C square. The opposite side, B square divided by 2 times AC. Or C. Hmm? The adjacent sides of the angle C, A, B, sum of the squares of A and B. A square plus B square minus. Table of sign is C, C square. 
divided by 2a. These are the three forms. Whatever, if you are asked to state the cosine rule, no need to state all these three. Any one of these three is sufficient to state as the cosine rule. But when you write sine rule paper, one of these two enough, right? And uh, when you state the cosine rule, any one of these three enough. You should be right across the b square plus c square minus c square divided by two this. The proof people, I'm going to discuss the second discussion of the question, right? And then you know uh, that we do some uh, trigonometric graphs, people. Very simple graph only so far we have drawn. Don't go to work out the questions in the uh, past papers uh, right now because you can't do them yet. We have to do more questions, right? So then sketching some complicated graphs, solving some complicated questions, we discuss in the second discussion of this. This okay, not now. Right. So now we'll come to people some questions under this. Right. Okay. Now. Take your tutorial, page number four. Under question number 16, I'm going to do part one. Take your tutorial, page number four. Under the major question number 16, right? Part one. Part one. Page four, question number 16, right? Part one. Uh, question 16, uh, it says like this, uh, in usual notation, state sign and cosine rule that you can just now be stated that now. Yeah. Yeah. Now you are given for any triangle ABC through that. Tan b minus c by 2 equals b minus c divided by b plus c cot a by 2. For any triangle ABC, now for any triangle ABC mean any means people that triangle can be acute triangle, right angle, obtuse angle. Understand? Right? Yeah. Now for any triangle ABC, so then in usual notation now people, since we are given their usual notation. We we'll draw a triangle ABC using the usual notation. We we'll mark the rest of this triangle. So this is A angle, this is B angle, this is C angle. Simply, this is simple B, this is simple C. Okay. People now, the sum of these triangles ABC is one A. A plus B plus. C is one name that we know. Right? And we will now I can write sine rule for this triangle using this usual notation hmm? by sine rule. Sine rule, if I write to this triangle, I write this form A upon sine me equals B upon sine me equals c upon sine c. This way we can write sine rule. Hmm? Right. Well, now you can make you see here, these three ratios are equal. Why? If we consider the arms of this ratio individually, this individually, and this individually, all the three answers of the three ratios being equal. That is why we could write them as equal this manner. 
each of this fraction ratio is a ratio of even this also ratio this also ratio for each ratio the answer when we separately individually calculate people the same answer we get that is why we could write that these three are equal because that common answer for each fraction has i am going to take as k or oh, later you like lambda okay i can write it as k c c means here t k assume then we run this ratio is k this ratio also k this ratio also k now i can write equating each fraction to this k separate like this a upon sin a plus k b upon sin b plus k c upon sin c also k now we use the first multiplication this way people and we subject this simple a b c hmm? a equals a sin a b equals a sin b c equals k sin c right what do you mean Right, no? Yeah, first come up, please. Everyone now, you got all the results now. Sometimes you got the good results. Hmm? For them, I conclude here. And the others people, some of you didn't get the expected results. People, all our mean people, all our mean, this is not the examination, right? This is not the examination. A level is the examination. Okay. Those who got good results, really good. Others people not bad. Okay. And when you do your A levels, people, no relation between all our results and A level results. Nobody can say the people they got nine A's for all levels only get three A passes for A levels. No, no such equation. Okay, so therefore, don't get upset. The people they couldn't get the expected results. They have to motivate themselves and do at your best. And the people they got nine days and good results. People don't be proud with your results. Understand? That result doesn't say your error result is three A passes. They must again work harder than you did your OIs. Because there is no link between oil research and air research. Understand? Throughout the two years, people work hard. Then the thing will be people inverted. The best example I can remember, I think uh, four, five, not more than that. Uh, one girl from Cambridge School. I am not going to reveal the school. She had, I think, she passed for oil maths, and uh, she did a first occasion, first attempt. She got a pass for maths, and uh, in the same class, people there were some students. They got good results for their oils. Most of them couldn't get but a passes. They stayed, stopped at C and B. Right. So now, most of the time, what uh, our people they got good results. They assume they internally they admire themselves. We are talented. That's fine. That's good. We can do. I do everything as I did in my A or else. People, if you think like that, people, that's the starting of your hell. Don't think like that, people. Don't self evaluate you. You have to do. You have to evaluate. Error examination. Try to use your all skills to get rid of all the obstacles you meet huh, when you go along this journey towards your errors. Then automatically, people, you will win the game. Others also don't compare with the others. You have to always compare with error examination, error papers, 
if you can tackle every a paper fast fast papers and all syllabus paper whatever your resource sometimes you will fail or at the end all the examination but if you can manage that papers and everything in a level paper that is the big that is the big so therefore don't make comparison with others okay compare always with your al examination with very leisurely people you can run along this journey otherwise some of the sometimes people now uh, this situation you will find soon after starting your school in the in the class sometimes there are some talented ones sometimes they can't get the answers right due to that you might think i am having lesser resource than him so therefore if he can't get the answer what to talk about me same like that people <laughs> you take the defeat huh? Huh? on the trip don't do like that people don't come happy with others he is a some guy right you must do yourself because always you have to familiar to bring friendly nature with the subject then you can make this way what come to the hero stand so there is something you think people comparing with other people nothing you will do okay so i hope uh, people who got good results really continue right in another way not like oils don't uh, think that as we did oils we can do all hairs no no relation other people the people who didn't get the expected result people people that's not because of your uh, potential sometimes that occasion you couldn't get the answer you know after get after coming home you got all the answers and everything you could dance so because of that situation people sometimes we expect to start you can get that doesn't say that you are not a talented one right people in the world no students no people called as what weak in ability people that's what the levels levels mean different okay so they are for those who got a particular sound that you really expect work hard at people work hard then you can come to the level of the other so they are for don't think much about your other stuff game is in the area game is the area of people you have to work hard right today itself you have to start people because your examination will be held to 23 august now almost august over september how many months do you have people only 22 months only 22 months you have okay uh, this uh, december january 21 exam will be kept uh, next year 22 september october the 22 year examination will be held and people after the examination only 22 months in this 22 months people there are three subjects okay huge work understand you must do so therefore you should have that potential right so therefore don't waste time hmm? after starting your school people all five days you have to go to school sometimes all five days in the evening you have classes sabhi sunday you need to classes there no time to work at home this is the good time people stay at home without any trouble the good chance of learning okay right sometimes after starting school people you don't have a time to at least to go to bed but most of the students they go to bed because after five days school two days classes people very tired life coming in the duty okay so that you don't have a good time to what stay at home and to do work okay so there are people this is a good time right i think that when you start work people after starting school the two years will elapse people very soon because of work work classes classes school everything <laughs> people no time right so yeah people this is a good time to study at home right right now people the first question i have to take is this right now we are given to do something like this tan b minus c by 2 we have to prove it is equal to simple b minus simple c divided by b plus c into cot a by 2 ah this is what we have to 
We are told this left hand side is equal to right hand side. That's what we have to prove. People may never regarding a triangle under usual notation. If you are asked to prove something like this, something like this mean people, trigonometric ratio, left hand side, ignoring capital letters as angles, and on the right hand side, a trigonometric ratio with simple letters, huh? representing the sides of the triangle. If you ask to prove something like this, people always start from these simple letters. In most of the questions, 90% of the questions, once you start from these simple letters to work out this question, that's the recommended method. So once I subject by this relation, this part, take this part A by 2, then we need to prove people B minus C divided by B plus C is equal to tan B minus C divided by 2. And also, I think that it is 1 upon 40 by 2. Ah, then, our purpose is to prove this one. one. Starting from this, I am going to start from this, and I am going to obtain an answer for this like this. Ah, if I can show like that, people, this equal to says this relation. That's the end of the question of the proving. So, therefore, people, the recommended method, this kind of question, always start by subjecting simple letters. By subject in simple letters, start from there. There are some questions, people. We can't subject all simple letters. Then we subject a group of simple letters and we start the question from there. We'll discuss that kind of question. Right. So then, people, what I do to prove this, I start from here. Understand? Yeah. We'll see now how to do this. Right. Now start with me. Right. And now write people like this. Consider, consider B minus C divided by B plus C. Right. Now people, you know. Here, by sign rule, we subjected B, A, and C. For those cases, we now substitute. For this simple, we put K sign B. This one, K sign B. C, K sign C. And B, K sign B. And plus K sign C. Okay. Now you can take this K out from the numerator because it's a constant. You can take k out from the denominator because it's a constant. That k from the numerator and k from the denominator you can cancel down. That means from the numerator and from the denominator, all k will cancel off. Right? You cancel down. Now, people, what we have here, it's like now sine b minus sine c. Because here we can apply cd formula. This is like sine c minus sine d formula. Can someone tell me what is sine c minus sine d? See here again, we get that formula. Sine C minus sine D formula is what? Sine C minus sine D. What is this given? 2 cos C plus D by 2 sine C minus D by 2. Right now, after that, we are here. And here, sine B plus sine C, it is like sine C plus sine D form. What is that? 2 sine C plus D by 2 cos C minus D by 2. Apply the new. Okay, right, now start. Right. Here, sine b minus sine c it is 2 cos. First, add these two angles and divide by 2.
and sine. Tell the difference of the angles divided by two. Right now, right, people try to remember this old formula. Hmm? If you don't have this formula in your memory, you can't work out people question. So therefore, hmm, remember this formula. It's very easy to ask people. If you be lazy, you can't do this one. Laziness is very dangerous, people, throughout the life. Don't be lazy, people. Don't be lazy. But they just think uh, you remember only two formulae, then all the people there are uh, nearly 20, only two weeks now. Very easy task now. Because of your negligence, you can't remember anything now. With that kind of sort, with that sort of uh, way, you can't do anything. Use a huge competition we have. And the other thing is here sine b plus sine c. This is a second formula you can do. Two sine sum of the angles divided by two. And next one is people cos b minus c divided by two. These two and this you can cancel down. Okay, now even here, this ABC capital letters stand for angles. No? Sum of the three angles of this triangle is 180. Then the next hint when you try to get the answer for this kind of questions, people, soon after applying this is CD formula, you will find some places you will find. Sum of the two angles out of that three angles. Okay, here you have B plus two. Here you have B plus two. Wherever, wherever you see people that way, sum of two angles out of that three angles A, B, C, subject that sum by this relation because this A, B, C three angles are the angles of the triangle, they add up to 180. Okay, then subject that sum of the two angles from this end. Substitute for that from here. Here we have B plus C. People want to subject B plus C in the left hand side, keep it as B plus C. If I take this A to right hand side, what happens? B plus C is equal to what? 180 minus A. Then here for this B plus C and this B plus C, we substitute 180 minus A. But here you can't like you can't put like that because here we don't have a sum. Keep it like that. Now we have. B plus C divided by answer B minus C divided by B plus C is equal to probability of cos B plus C. Uh, take this A to the right hand side. It's now 18 minus C hmm? divided by 2. And sign B minus C. Divide by two right now divide by this one and by next cos b minus c by two. And here also for this b plus c I can put one eight point c hmm? sin. 180 minus say by this right. Well, now you see how to put this. Right now, yes. Now, by this two, we have to divide this 180 and this. A both. When we divide this 180 by 2, we get 90 here. Minus A by 2. Then here we get cos 90 minus A by 2. Divided hmm. by here also same. 90 by 180 by 2, 90 minus A by 2. Sign. 90 minus 3 by 
But because it becomes very clear, you see here, the angle here we have b minus c by 2, same way here we have. If we take this small angle as theta, then this also theta. Now this is sin theta divided by this is cos theta. We know sin theta divided by cos theta is one people. Sin by cos is tan theta. Then this division we can write as how people tan b minus c divided by 2. Right now, this is tan b minus c divided by 2. Did you calculate? Right now? Yes. Now, what is this? Cos 90 minus angle. People, we know. Cos 90 minus theta. Can remember we learned how many results? Hmm? We learned, uh, I think, uh, huh? 28 different results. Understood. I told you those also we use. Right. What is this? Cos 90 minus theta by 2. In sign A by 2. We said if the first angle is on the y axis, the cos ratio will turn to sine. The angle is the second angle with the bracket. Sine 90 minus a by 2 is equal to cos a by 2. Then I can write this. I write the next step we are here. Huh? It's now cos 90 minus a by 2 is sine a by 2. Sin 90 minus a by 2 is cos a by 2. And here, tan b minus c by 2. Okay, now, right. People, uh, what is sin divided by cos? Sin divided by cos is equal to tan. Right now, this is nothing but tan a by 2. Tan a by 2 into and b minus c divided by 2. This way we get. What is the answer, people? We have subject tan b minus c by 2. So, subject is tan b minus c by 2, people. I have to bring this tan a by 2 to the left hand side denominator. Hmm? Right. Left hand side denominator. Alright, this people. B minus C divided by B plus C. Once you bring this tan A by 2 to the left hand side denominator, the corresponding numerator will be 1. So then I am going to write it separate like this 1 upon. Once I bring this here, it is now 1 upon tan A by 2. Equals. Now tan b minus c divided by 2. Okay. People, what is 1 upon tan? 1 divided by tan, we know people, it is cot. Then what is this? 1 upon tan divided by 2 is what? Cot a divided by 2. Cot a by 2. Understand? Cot a by 2. Therefore, we get this result now like this. B minus C divided by B plus C. This is 1 upon 10 is equal to for A by 2 is equal to 10. B minus C divided by 2. Okay, now see what has happened. The left hand side, this is equal to right hand side. What do you mean by that? The right hand side, this equals left hand side. Huh? X equals Y means Y equals X. So therefore, we get the answer. Understood. Right now. So we'll write the answer. Therefore, 
we get the answer time b minus e by 2. Is equal to b minus b divided by b plus c cot d by two. This is how we do that. Right. Yeah. Right. So now. Uh, in question number 16, some more sums available people. Hmm? Okay. Next day we supposed to do some more questions. Right? Yeah. Any question today regarding this 